everyone. Today is June 20th, 2021, and tonight we will be reading 2 Kings 3 and 4, Acts 20, 17 through 21, 16, Psalm 139, and Proverbs 17, 24, and 25. So let's get into our reading of 2 Kings 3 and 4. In the 18th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Jehoram, the son of Ahab, became king over Israel and Samaria, and he reigned 12 years. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, though not like his father and mother, for he put away the pillar of Baal that, was, that his father had made. Nevertheless, he clung to the sin of Jeroboam, the son of Naboth, which he made Israel to sin. He did not depart from it. Now Mesha, king of Moab, was a sheep breeder, and he had to deliver the ki to the king of Israel 100,000 lambs and the wool of 100,000 rams. But when Ahab died, the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So King Jeho uh, Jehoram marched out of Samaria at, the time, <coughs> at that time and mustered all Israel. And he went and sent word to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with, with me to battle against Moab? And he said, I will go. I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. Then he said, By which way shall we march? Jehoram answered, By the way of the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Israel went with the king of Judah and the king of Edom. And when they had made a circuitous march of seven days... There was no water for the army or for the animals that followed them. Then the, kings of, the king of Israel said, Alas, the Lord has called these three kings to give them into the hand of Moab. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there no prophet of the Lord here, though whom, through whom we may inquire of the Lord? Then one of the kings of Israel's servants answered, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, is here, who poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. And Elisha said to the king of Israel, What have I to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and to the prophets of your mother. But the king of Israel said to him, No, it is the Lord who has called these three, th these three kings to give them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts live, before whom I stand, were it not that I have regard for Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would neither look at you nor see you. But now bring me a musician. And when the musician played, the hand of the Lord came upon him, and he said, Thus says the Lord, I will make this dry steam bed full of pools. For thus says the Lord, You shall not see wind or rain, but that steam bed shall be filled with water so that you shall drink, you and your livestock and your animals. This is a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He, all, he will also give the Moabites into your hand, and you shall attack every fortified city and every choice city, and shall fell every good tree and stop up all springs of water and ruin... Sorry, I lost my spot. And ruin every good piece of land with stones. Sorry, one of the boys woke up. Here we are in uh, verse 20. The next morning, about the time of the offering, about the time of offering the sacrifice, behold, water came from the direction of Edom till the, count, till the country was filled with water. When all the Moabites heard that the kings had come up to fight against them, all who were able to put on armor from the youngest to the oldest were called out and were drawn up at the border. And when they arose early in the morning, and the sun shone on the water. The Moabites saw the water opposite them as red as blood, and they said, This is blood. The kings have surely fought together and struck one another down. Now then, Moab to the spoil. But when they came, but when they came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose and struck the Moabites till they fled before them, and they and they went forward, striking the Moabites as they went. And they overthrew the cities, and on every good piece of land, every man threw a stone until it was covered. They stopped every spring of water and felled all the good trees, till only its stones were left in Kir Harasheth, Haraseth, and the slingers surrounded and attacked it. When the king of Moab saw that the battle was going, 
against him, he took with him 700 swordsmen to break through opposite the king of Edom, but they could not. Then he took his oldest son who was to reign in his place and offered him for a burnt offering on the wall. And there came great wrath against Israel. And they withdrew from him and returned to their own land. Now the wife of one of the sons of the prophets cried to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, but the creditor has come, has come to take my two children to be his slaves. And Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what have you in the house? And she said, Your servant has nothing in the house except the jar of oil. Then he said, Go outside, borrow vessels from all your neighbors, empty vessels and not too few. Then go in and shut the door behind yourself and your sons and pour into all these vessels. And when one is full, set it aside. So she went from him and shut the door behind herself and her sons. And as she poured, they brought the vessels to her. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another. Then the oil stopped flowing. She came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on the rest. One day, Elisha went up to Shunem, where a wealthy woman lived, who urged him to eat food, eat some food. So whenever he passed that way, he would not turn in he would not he would turn in there to eat food. And she said to her husband, Behold now. I know that this is a holy man of God who is continually passing our way. Let us make a small room on the roof with walls and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp, so that whenever he comes, he can go in there. One day when he came there, one day he came there and he turned into the chamber and rested there. And he said to Gehazi, the servant, call this Shunammite. When he had called her, she stood before him and he said to him, Say now to her, See, you have taken all this trouble for us. What is to be done for you? Would you have a word spoken on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? Gehazi answered, Well, she has no son, and her husband is old. He said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the doorway, and he said, At this season, about, the next time, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, No, my lord, O man of God, do not lie with your servant. But the woman conceived, and she bore a son about that time the following spring, as Elisha had said to her. When the child had grown, he went up one day to his father among the reapers. And he said to his father, O oh, my head, my head. And the father said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. And when he had lifted him and brought him to his mother, the child sat on her lap till noon, and then he died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God who, and shut the door behind him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, Send me one of the servants and one of the donkeys that I may quickly go to the man of God and come back again. And he said, Why will you go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. She said, All is well. Then she saddled the donkey and she said to her servant, Urge the animal on. Do not slacken the pace for me until I tell you, unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her coming, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Look, there is the Shunammite. Run at once to meet her and say to her, Is all well with you? Is all well with your husband? Is all well with your child? She, and she answered, All is well. And when she came to the mountain to the man of God, she caught hold of his feet, and Gehazi came to push her away. But the man of God said, Leave her alone, for she is in bitter distress, and the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. Then she said, Did I ask my Lord for a son? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? He said to Gehazi, Tie up your garment and take my staff in your hand and go. If you meet anyone, do not greet him, unless, and if, him, if anyone greets you, do not reply. And lay my staff on the face of the child. Then the mother of the child said, As the Lord lives and as your servant and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So he arose and, he fo and followed her. Gehazi went on ahead and laid the staff on the face of the child, but there was no sound or sign of life. Therefore he returned to meet him and told him, The child has not awakened. 
When Elisha came into the house, he saw the young ch the child lying up dead on the bed on his bed. So he went in and shut the door behind the two of them and prayed to the Lord. Then he went up and lay on the child, putting his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. And as he stretched himself upon him, the flesh of the child became warm. Then he got up again and walked once back and forth in the house, and went up and stretched himself upon Sorry, then he got up again and walked once back and forth in the house and went up and stretched himself upon him. The child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. Then he summoned Gehazi and said, call this Shunammite. So he called her and when she came to him, he said, pick up your son. She came and fell at his feet, bowing to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. And Elisha came to, again to Gilgal where there was a famine in the land. And as the sons of the prophets were sitting before him, he said to his servant, Set on the large pot and boil stew for the sons of the prophets. One of them went out into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine and gathered from, its, from it his lap full of wild gourds and came and cut them up into the pot of, pot of stew, not knowing what they were. And they poured out some for the men to eat. But while they were eating of the stew, they cried out, O oh, man of God, there is death in the pot. And they could not eat it. And he said, Then bring flour. And he threw it in the pot and said, Pour some out for the men that they may eat. And there was no harm in the pot. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing the man of God bread of the first fruits, twenty loaves of barley, and fresh ears of grain in his sack. And Elisha said, Give to the men that they may eat. But his servant said, How can I set this before a hundred men? So he repeated, Give them to the men that they may eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat and have some left. <coughs> so, he set before, so he set it before them, and they ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. Acts chapter 20, seven, verse 17 through twenty-one sixteen. Now from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church to come to him. And when they had come to him, he said to them, You yourselves know how I lived among you the whole time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials that happened to me through the plot of the Jews, how I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public. Sorry, now my older son just came downstairs with no shorts on and no underwear, so... We uh, got that figured out and sent back to bed. So it's 9.45. Let's start again, Acts 20, 17. Now from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church to come to him. And when they had come, and when they came to him, he said to them, You yourselves know how I lived among you the whole time from the first day that I set foot in Asia serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials that happened to me through the plot of the Jews, how I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance towards God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I am going to Jerusalem constrained by you. Sorry, don't ask. And now, behold, I am going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions wait, await me. But I do not account my life of anything val of any value, nor as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus, to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that none of you among whom I have gone out about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God 
which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish every one with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who are with me. In all things, I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. And there was much weeping on the part of it, on the part of all. They embraced Paul and kissed him, being sorrowful most of all because of the word he had spoken, that they would not see his face again, and they accompanied him to the ship. And when he had parted from them and set sail, we came by a straight course to Kos, and the next day to Rhodes, and from there Patara. And having found a ship crossing to Phoenicia, we went aboard and set sail. When we had come, into the side of, come in sight of Cyprus, leaving it on the left, we sailed to Syria, and landed at Tyre, for there the ship was to unload its cargo. And having sought out the disciples, we stayed there for seven days. And through the Spirit, they were telling Paul not to go on to Jerusalem. When our days there were ended, we departed and went on our journey, and they all, with wives and children, accompanied us until we were outside the city. And kneeling down on the beach, we prayed and said farewell to one another. Then we went on board the ship and they returned home. When we had finished the voyage from Tyre, we arrived at Ptolemy, Ptolemy, and we greeted the brothers and stayed with them for one day. On the next day, we departed and came to Caesarea, and we entered the house of Philip the evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. While we were staying for many days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. And coming to us, he took Paul's belt and bound his own feet and hands and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, This is how the Jews at Jerusalem will bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the people there urged him not to go to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What are you doing, weeping and breaking my heart? For I am not ready only to be imprisoned, but even to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And since he would not be persuaded, we ceased and said, Let the will of the Lord be done. After these days, we got ready and went up to Jerusalem. And some of the disciples from Caesarea went with us, bringing us to the house of Nason of Cyprus, an early disciple with whom we should lodge. Psalm 139. To the choir master, a psalm of David. O Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down <clears throat> and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in behind and before. You lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to, he to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as day, for darkness is as light with you. For you formed my inward parts, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when it was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. 
How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I could count them, they are more than the sand. I awake, I awake, and I am still with you. O oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God! O men of blood, depart from me. They speak against you with malice, malicious intent. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with complete hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any grievous way in me. And lead me in the everlasting. Proverbs 17, 24 and 25. The discerning sets his face toward wisdom, but the eyes of a fool are on the ends of the earth. A foolish son is a grief to his father and bitterness to her who bore him. All right, tomorrow is June 21st, and we will read 2 Kings 5 and 6. If I can turn the page. Acts 21, 17 through 23, 11. Psalm 140 and Proverbs 17, 26. So be back here again tomorrow for our next reading. Thanks for joining me tonight. I'll see you then.